I want to go on record that I support farming. As a matter of fact, you could call me Protractor. Today, I'm going to recap a 2021 action thriller film called The Protégé. The movie starts in 1991, in Da Nang, Vietnam. An assassin named Moody Dutton, in the pouring rain, cautiously gets inside a building where several insurgents lay dead. Moody tries to steal their money until he hears some sound. He opens a wardrobe door to find a girl aiming a gun at him. Moody takes the gun from the girl, but she has another gun as a backup. He convinces her that he will not harm her and carries the girl with him. Then the movie shifts to 30 years later. In Bucharest, a gangster named Volley is abducted and held for ransom. The girl from the beginning, now a grown-up woman named Anna, brings Volley to meet his people to collect the ransom money. But instead of getting money, Anna is knocked down and brought to Volley's father by goons, mob boss Don Prida. He threatens Anna and asks about who these people are, but she expresses her real intention is not money but to reach Don Prida. Anna kills him by stabbing him in the neck and kills his two other guards before escaping. As she exits, the other guards are also shot by a sniper. Valley is left tied in the middle of a forest. Now Anna lives with Moody and housekeeper, Claudia. They attempt to celebrate Moody's birthday, but he keeps on playing with his new toy drum. Moody has raised Anna like a daughter, and they spend good time over the evening. She gives him a guitar owned by Albert King as a birthday present. As they start discussing about the business they are into, Moody mentions that he has been looking for one particular target since 1998. Moody keeps on coughing in between. Anna goes to a dry cleaner owner, Benny, to try and find some information regarding Moody's guy. We find out that she runs an elegant bookstore, where one day, she is visited by a man named Rembrandt, who claims to want a rare gift for a book-loving friend. When quoted $265,000 for a book of anonymous poetry by Edgar Allan Poe, he demurs, but not before reciting one of the poems upon his departure. Later, Anna runs through the park, where Benny gives her information on the target, Lucas Hayes, who was in Da Nang around the time that Moody found Anna. When Anna returns home, she finds Claudia dead and goes upstairs to find Moody dead in the bathtub. She tries to reach Benny for help, only to find the dry cleaner and that someone has killed Benny, frying him in a steam presser. Anna goes to the bookstore to get guns and cash. Meanwhile, some assassins begin to fire on her through the windows. She pretends to be shot dead. One of the assassins stops to inform their boss, and another went closer to check on her, but gets shot in a jiffy. When another one hears the gunshot, he tries to escape, but she shoots him straight in the head and takes away his car. After losing her only family, Anna decides to seek out revenge and travels back to Vietnam to look for any lead to the person who ordered to kill Moody. Through Billy's given reports and news reports, Anna found out Lucas Hayes was the son of Edward Hayes. Edward was a businessman indicted for war crimes who was killed in a car explosion in Da Nang. In one media report, Anna spotted Moody standing in the crowd near the crime scene and concluded that Moody would have bombed Edward's car. After his father's murder on Christmas Day 1991, Lucas was in Paris until 1998, but returned to Da Nang in March 1999. He was admitted to St. Quiteria Hospital on June 2, 1999, after which there was nothing of his existence. Anna reluctantly decides to return to Da Nam to find the missing links. In the next scene, we see a group of bikers riding on the road. Suddenly, an exceptionally good rider comes from the opposite side and makes some of the riders lose balance. Their leader follows the bike, and it is revealed that the rider was none other than Anna, and the leader of the biker group, Billy Boy, was her old friend. She asks his help to evade the security of Jocino Vol, to just talk to him once. Billy Boy, along with his biker gang, helps her to get close to Edward's old business partner, Jocino Vol, following his car and surrounding him from their bikes and pointing gun from all sides. She enters Vol's car, telling him her purpose is to fix a meeting with him. Vol was in his office with his lawyer Duquette. Anna told him about all the fishiness in the matter as whoever inquired about Lucas getting killed. Vol gets anxious and says he has nothing to do with it. He was about to spill some beans, but Duquette kills Vol by shooting him. More gunmen show up, 
but Anna smashes Ducade's face and climbs up to get away. Then follows a deadly fight scene between them. Anna, by pointing gun on Ducate, gets into another room, leaving a naked wire. She manages to exit the building, but is still hit by a car and taken in by Ducate and the other men. Ducate brings Anna into his custody to interrogate her, to know why she is after Lucas or Edward. She is tortured by pouring water many times and held captive for a while, until Rembrandt shows up to reveal his involvement in this. He explains that he was not involved in the deaths of Moody and the others. He and Ducat work for the same person, but he was never going to the same lengths as Ducat to get to Anna. The thugs later come in to rough Anna up some more, even hanging her up, but she gains the upper hand and kills all of them and making her escape. She makes it to Billy's hideout for protection. Rembrandt comes to check on her, only to find her elope and mock at Ducat. Then there goes a flashback. Moody and Anna are crossing the border without Anna having the passport. Moody bribes the soldier, but he doesn't let Anna pass. Moody pretends to leave and gives his passport to Anna, but after taking a few steps, he turns back and fires on soldiers. Again in the present, Anna tells Billy that Moody had helped her out, was kind to her. She has to reach the murderer. Billy helps Anna track down the hospital where Lucas was admitted. She speaks to a nun working there and finds Lucas, who is an adult and doesn't really move or speak. Rembrandt learns that Anna went to the hospital and arranges for a dinner with her, and it is revealed that his boss is a very much alive Edward. Rembrandt is told by his friend that he is intrigued by Anna, but he says he is just curious. Anna later meets Rembrandt for dinner, where he tries to get her to back off of Edward's work, but she makes it clear that this mission is personal to her. After a dinner date between Rembrandt and Anna, Rembrandt gets into a street fight with local thugs hired by Duquette, but survives. Meanwhile, Anna kills Duquette. Rembrandt arrives and sees Duquette was hanged. Unaware of Anna, she ambushes him and fights with him, but in the end, they decide to spend some good time together. Despite this, she tells Rembrandt she is still completing her mission. On her way out, Anna is attacked by one of Edward's thugs, but the gunman is killed by another gunman, who happens to be a very much alive Moody. He takes Anna away and reveals he faked his death, using one of the unlucky hitmen as a decoy by blowing his face off and convincing the authorities that it was him. He and Anna meet up with Billy again as they plot their ultimate takedown of Edward and Rembrandt. Edward holds a banquet with extra tight security. Anna infiltrates the party in disguise as a waitress. As Edward gives a speech, she makes her attempt to assassinate him, but is thwarted by Rembrandt. Meanwhile, Anna and Rembrandt put up a fight. Edward was escorted to his panic bunker to save his life. To Edward's surprise, Moody was waiting there with a ticking bomb in his bag. Before his death, Edward confessed that he faked his death to protect his beloved son, Lucas, from his enemy's threats or harm. Moody sarcastically laughs at Edward's emotional plea and underlines that Edward did all this to save himself. The fake death was Edward's chance to disappear, as no one looks for a dead man. Through the years, Edward ran his crime syndicate from the secluded island. In the end, Moody also conveyed his addicted voyage to find Lucas. Moody felt remorseful for taking away a father from a son, and thus he wanted to amend his mistakes. How could he have known that the web of affairs of rich criminals is beyond anyone's understanding? When the confessions were done and dealt with, Moody torched the bunker with a bomb. He killed himself along with Edward. As the party goes into chaos, Anna runs, but is shot in the arm by Rembrandt. She gets away from Rembrandt. A flashback shows the night when Anna watched as insurgents beheaded her mother and then shot her sisters and father. They took Anna to their hideout, where the leader of the men assembled a pistol in front of her, and she memorized the steps. After the man leaves, Anna assembles a second pistol and proceeds to kill all the men, and Moody eventually finds her. In the present, Anna is seriously injured in the battle with Rembrandt, but is able to escape following the confusion of the explosion. Anna makes her way to an abandoned building, the same one where Moody found her as a child. At this point, Rembrandt appears, as he has tracked Anna to the building. The two stare each other down at gunpoint. Anna says she can't leave Rembrandt alive. 
Even though the two have a personal relationship, she knows that she'll always be looking over her shoulder if he lives. He's the only person alive who knows what she's done. Rembrandt tries to talk her down, to convince her she could just walk away, but he also never lowers his gun. The audience POV shifts to outside the building, and we see a flash and hear a gunshot. We see a single shadow move down the hall, and a moment later Anna emerges from the building alone. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.